states. We are now less than two months until actual election day. We are already into the zone in terms of bail and ballots going out. We, of course, have the North Carolina issue where they had to maybe reprint some of that mm -hmm. in the ballots because of the ruling of taking RFK Jr. off the ballot this week. And so this debate actually does matter. So for people saying that it, it won't, of course it will matter. And I think it's going to matter, of course, in terms of people looking at the issues in the swing states where there are very few undecided voters and whether they're going to decide between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. The political landscape of 2024 is marked by unprecedented shifts and surprises. What began as a typical election cycle has transformed into a high-stakes drama captivating the nation. At the center of this whirlwind stands Kamala Harris thrust unexpectedly into the spotlight as the Democratic nominee for president after President Joe Biden's unexpected withdrawal from the race. The transition from Biden to Harris has been abrupt and jarring for many. As one commentator notes, But Biden is moving on. His campaign is moving on. He's attending events in New York and New Jersey this weekend in hopes of quieting post-debate panic. And as he campaigned with the New York Hamptons elite, Biden doubled down against the naysayers, telling the crowd, quote, I didn't have a great night, but neither did Trump. I still believe this nation is honest and decent. Donald Trump will destroy democracy. I will defend it. I promise you we're going to win this election. Biden's departure from the race has left many Democrats scrambling to adjust their strategies and messaging. The party faces the challenge of rallying behind a new standard bearer while maintaining the momentum of their previous campaign. Harris, for her part, finds herself in a precarious position. As a former vice president stepping into the role of presidential candidate, she faces scrutiny from all sides. Critics are quick to point out her past record and question her readiness for the highest office. Yeah, well, when she says that she is willing to tackle inflation on day one, that's like someone who lights a house on fire and then conveniently calls the fire department and wants all of the credit for somehow saving the remnants of what they've destroyed. You know, Kamala Harris was the last vote to get the Inflation Induction Act, it's technically called the Inflation Reduction Act, over the finish line, which really boosted inflation and caused a lot of damage for Americans across the country. And when you look at this polling, it's quite interesting to see that with all of the honeymoon talk and all of the favorable coverage of Kamala Harris, she still is losing to Donald Trump. The economy has quickly emerged as a central battleground in the campaign. Harris finds herself defending the economic policies of the Biden administration, while simultaneously trying to chart her own course. And so you're gonna have these battling uh, visions, I guess, if she ever comes out to speak about what her vision will be about how to move the country forward. She's already copied President Trump on the no tax on tips issue, but it seems like she's gonna try to run away from Bidenomics in a way, but also embrace many of the far left policy positions by repackaging it to seem a little more palatable to independent voters in these swing states. Trump sensing an opportunity is wasting no time in attacking Harris's economic credentials. When Kamala lays out her fake economic plan this week, probably will be a copy of my plan because basically that's what she does. Just remember, she goes to work every morning in the West Wing. Her desk is 10 steps from the Oval Office. She cast the tie-breaking votes that gave us record inflation. As the campaign intensifies, Harris finds herself grappling with her past positions and trying to appeal to a broader electorate. It's so interesting because if, if, if far-left policies that she has held, not only just for over the past four years as the vice president to Joe Biden, has, who ran as a moderate, but really has had one of the most liberal presidencies in modern times, but if you look at her record of running in 2019 and 2020, if those policies were popular, they would not be running away from them. She would be embracing her, quote, principled stand on all of these issues. Instead, they're running far away from them because they don't sit well with the American people, especially with the voters that she needs, independence. The media's role in shaping public perception has become a contentious issue throughout the campaign. Critics are accusing major outlets of biased reporting, with some arguing that the coverage favors Harris. Donald Trump has gotten 90 percent negative coverage. Mm -hmm. It's already been analyzed. She's gotten 90 percent positive coverage and they're complaining about it. Now, you expect MSNBC to take you out of context. You don't expect the Associated Press. They're a wire service. You're right. They're supposed to play it straight. The issue of media bias 
came to a head with a controversial headline from the Associated Press regarding comments made by Senator J.D. Vance about school shootings. Well, some blatant and jaw-dropping dishonesty from Team Kamala and the media, the Associated Press taking J.D. Vance completely out of context over comments the senator made about the tragic school shooting in Georgia that killed four people. The AP blasting out this bogus headline that reads, quote, J.D. Vance says school shootings are a fact of life, calls for better security. But here's what Vance actually said. I don't like that this is a fact of life, but if you're, if you are a psycho and you want to make headlines, you realize that our schools are soft targets and we have got to bolster security at our schools. We, we've got to bolster security so that if a psycho wants to walk through the front door and kill a bunch of children, they're not able to. This incident has sparked a fierce debate about journalistic integrity and the responsibility of news organizations in an era of heightened political polarization. If she had any journalistic standards whatsoever, she would not have allowed that to pass. But it's no longer about journalistic standards. It's about winning, winning at any cost. And remember, Kamala is of the administration of cheap fakes and misinformation and disinformation and government oversight. And so, you know, for them, it's like we have to decide what the truth is. As the campaign progresses, both candidates are facing intense scrutiny over their past records and current positions. Harris, in particular, is struggling to reconcile her progressive past with her new role as the Democratic standard bearer. So they're running away from it, and it's so interesting because while she's you know, trying to strike out on her own and be her own candidate. She's not just the vice president for Joe Biden. She's her own woman, wants to be the first female president of the United States. She's copying Donald Trump. And the White House really is not letting her get away from Bidenomics. If you go to the to whitehouse.gov and you put Bidenomics into the search bar, you'll find dozens of posts, press releases that say, Biden-Harris administration, and nobody should forget that they sent her out to do a number of events where she very happily touted Bidenomics. The issue of national security and border control has also emerged as a key point of contention. Okay, well, we care about the truth. Had Kamala let them in, and now dangerous Venezuelan gang members are spreading like wildfire across America. With more than a month and a half until Election Day, polls are showing a tight race, with Trump maintaining a slight edge. A new matchup, but the same result. Former President Trump leading Harris by one point in this brand new Fox national poll. And Trump also, excuse me, Trump also leading Harris by eight points amongst independent voters. Americans also overwhelmingly turning to the former president on these top issues, on the economy, on border security, as he's blasting Kamala Harris for embracing Bidenomics. The campaign is entering its final stages, marked by intense debates and public appearances. Both candidates are seeking to make their case directly to the American people. I don't walk as easy as I used to. I don't speak as smoothly as I used to. I don't deba debate as well as I used to. But I know what I do know. I know how to tell the truth. This statement, originally made by Biden, has become a rallying cry for the Democratic campaign with Harris echoing similar sentiments in her own appearances. As the nation prepares to cast their votes in the coming weeks, the choice between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump represents more than just a decision between two candidates. It is shaping up to be a referendum on the direction of the country and the values that will shape its future. The campaign has exposed deep divisions within American society, not just between the two parties, but within them as well. Democrats are grappling with the sudden transition from Biden to Harris, while Republicans debate the merits of returning to Trump's leadership. In the final stretch of the campaign, both candidates are crisscrossing the country, making their appeals to voters. We had a big victory against a man that really is looking to destroy our country. He's the worst. He's the most corrupt, the most incompetent president in the history of our country. Joe Biden's policies are causing America's decline at a level that we've never seen before. Trump's fiery rhetoric contrasts sharply with Harris's more measured approach as she seeks to present herself as a unifying figure. Kamala has declared that tackling inflation will be a day one priority. Think of it for her, but day one for Kamala was three and a half years ago. Why hasn't she done it? As the nation moves closer to Election Day, the stakes couldn't be higher 
and the outcome remains uncertain. The 2024 election is shaping up to be a pivotal moment in American history, a crossroads where the nation must choose not just between two candidates, but between two distinct visions for its future. As voters prepare to head to the polls in the coming weeks, they carry with them the weight of this decision, knowing that their choice will shape the course of the country for years to come. The outcome of this election will not just determine who sits in the Oval Office, but will speak volumes about the character and values of the American people in these tumultuous times.